much, Andrew. Um, hello to everybody, and thank you for joining this EPISTEM webinar today. Uh, and thank you very much for your introduction, Andrew. Um, so, as was said, uh, we're a UK-based biotechnology company, and um, specifically with regard to IBD-focused projects, we've worked with more than 50 companies over the last 10 years, um, from some of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies through to small SMEs and startups. So as a brief introduction to IBD, although I guess very many of you are very familiar with the subject, uh, inflammatory bowel disease is an umbrella term. Uh, the two main diseases covered by this term are Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Uh, and there are more than 5 million people worldwide that suffer from these diseases, um, the majority of which uh, reside within the UK and Europe and in the USA. Um, the disease itself is a large uh, burden on the healthcare budgets. Um, more than 700 million pounds is spent in the UK on uh, caring for IBD sufferers and nearly two billion dollars uh, in the USA. Um, there's a great need for better pharmacological intervention and disease management uh, within IBD uh, with more than 30 percent of patients uh, failing to uh, respond or ceasing to respond to, to primary therapy. And during their lifetimes, a uh, majority of Crohn's sufferers and almost a quarter of UC sufferers requiring surgery at some stage during their lives. Presentation of the human disease for both Crohn's and UC is very similar uh, with uh, diarrhea and pain, um, weight loss, poor growth. Uh, it's socially, it's a very debilitating disease, especially as there are a great many uh, young people that suffer with the disease, particularly Crohn's. Pathological symptoms uh, in the large bowel and for Crohn's also in the small bowel and in extra GI uh, mucosal tissues um, show uh, ulceration and uh, changes in the architecture of the epithelium. Crohn's is particularly associated with the more severe presentations of fibrosis and stenosis and fistula formation and both Crohn's and UK, UC carry an increased uh, lifetime cancer risk. Uh, although the disease presentation is similar, uh, the underlying immunology for the two diseases is different, uh, with Crohn's having a, a Th1 type uh, immunity uh, underlying the pathology, and ulcerative colitis generally thought of a Th2 type immunity underlying its pathology. Um, with TH17 immunity contributing to both uh, diseases in terms of their chronic nature. Uh, to date, uh, on a genetic basis, more than 160 risk loci have been found to be associated with IBD in humans, uh, which are generally associated with the control of innate and or adaptive immunity, including the recognition and response to microorganisms in the gut, uh, the barrier function of the intestinal mucosa, and the control of T cell uh, activation and differentiation. Within the literature, you will find published now a uh, description of a great many different types of model for studying uh, IBD. Uh, these range from mutant and knockout strains, uh, infection-based models, chemically induced models of colitis, and models based on the adoptive transfer of uh, specific T cell populations to uh, immunosuppressed mice. In choosing a model for efficacy testing, uh, there are many considerations uh, to be looked at uh, when choosing the right model uh, for your particular project. Uh, if you wish to use a particular model, you might wish to consider its breeding characteristics. Uh, for example, black six skids are, are very poor breeders. And it may take you a, a considerable time to achieve uh, a, a reasonable sized cohort for performing a study. Uh, the time course of the disease may be long and they may be asynchronous, uh, and therefore you may wish to consider synchronizing the disease, such as in our said knockouts, where you might want to uh, give uh, peroxicam. Uh, you may wish to work on a knockout model. Its specific focus may be good for you, or it may be detrimental to uh, studying your particular uh, test item. Uh, responsiveness to a standard of care is always an important consideration and uh, it is something we give a lot of study to here um, at EPISTEM. 
Uh, there are many local factors that may affect the level of disease that you obtain. The gut flora in the mice may be um, influenced by your supplier and also by the environment in your animal facility. Also, there's the cost-benefit to weigh out and the requirement of your cells to uh, confirm previously obtained data in a specific model. We've been running uh, preclinical models, as I say, at Epistem for the last 10 years. Uh, during that time, the three most commonly run models have been the chemically induced models of DSS and TMBS induced acute colitis and the CD4, CD62L positive T cell transfer mediated model of chronic colitis. All these models uh, demonstrate certain aspects of human disease, but none uh, is ideal. And I think now we have a polling question for you, which should appear on the screen. That's correct. Thank you for that. We certainly do have a polling question here, and you and the audience can vote on this in real time by clicking on your screen. You can vote on uh, multiple answers here if you'd like. The question we have for you, which other preclinical models are of potential relevance to you and your company? Your options, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, oncology, more options, mucositis slash acute radiation syndrome, and your final option, wound healing slash skin care. That question again, which other preclinical models are of potential relevance to you and your company? Looks like most of you have voted at this point, so I'm going to close polling now and share the results with you. There we have it. The most popular answer, rheumatoid arthritis. That was followed by psoriasis and then oncology. Uh, that was then followed by wound healing slash skin care and finally mucositis slash acute radiation syndrome. And with that, I'll hand back the mic to you.